Okay, this is the short tutorial that I'm going to do on the LEDs and the, the wiring inside the uh, uh, the Sims Plombob diamond thingy. Uh, first you need to know about LEDs is that LEDs come in a very standard package. Usually the shorter leg means that it's the the minus side and the longer leg means that it is the plus side. And there's also a little flat side that also means that that is the minus side. They also have a name cathode and anode. Cathode for the minus side and anode for the plus side. Now when you wire these things they they themselves have a resistance so when you have like a 3 volt battery like this one you can test LEDs with one. If it's the correct way around then you'll see light come out. If it's not then uh, it's not the right way around. This is useful when you have when you're using LEDs that have been scavenged for some some something or you're reusing stuff. So the the legs might not be good or you can't see the flat side so you can test it rather easily. Now these particular LEDs, uh, I think they are UV LEDs, I just picked some random stuff. If you want to have a resistor with the LEDs, you should use an LED resistor calculator to determine what kind of uh, resistor you need to have. But the thing is that because of the internal resistance of the batteries, most of the time you don't need to use a very big resistor. For example, if you use two LEDs, white LEDs in series with 6 volts, you should be able to get by with, uh, the calculator said something like 200 ohms, but I think an 82 ohm resistor should be enough for that. And now for the wiring part, uh, you need to, the, the, the way that the uh, plumb bulb was wired is that you need to connect the plus side to the minus side, and then you have them in series. And I'll show a, a nice circuit diagram here that will make sense, maybe. And uh, to make these connect together, to solder them together, you're going to actually have to bend the legs around the other one, because otherwise they're not going to nicely stay still. It's just using pliers here, so that you'd just twist them with pliers. Uh, you can also tape them together and then solder them, uh, solder the legs together and that, that should hold. After that you need to connect the, the resistor to... I connected it to the plus side and in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter because the only, the only purpose of the resistor is to um, resist the, the electric current a little bit so that you don't burn out your LEDs but because the, the batteries have the internal resistance I doubt that you're going to burn out your, your LEDs unless you put some serious serious power supplies in, in hand. Um, there are other ways of connecting LEDs you don't have to use a resistor there are uh, DC DC power supplies that are made for LEDs uh, they are better for battery life but they are also a lot more expensive than uh, a resistor. A resistor is something it is a couple of cents. Uh, the power supply would be a, something like from a couple of euros to uh, something like twenty euros. So it's it's good for things that you need to have good battery life, but not good when you're on a budget. Also, uh, for for projects, I would suggest getting one of these breadboards so that you don't have to solder everything together and you can just plug them in and test your circuit before you commit to it by, by soldering them together. Then you can make sure that the things work before you actually solder everything together. And now that we've gotten the theory out of the way, we're going to get to work. So here we have the LEDs. And then we're going to have to wire them together. These are ultra bright LEDs that I swapped. So.
And if you're soldering on the kitchen table like I am, please use something below the, the soldering area because otherwise people are going to get pissed at you for ruining the kitchen table. And now that our soldering iron is hot, we can get to soldering. Now you can hold down the LED with your finger and then touch the leg with the soldering iron and touch next to the soldering iron with the, the solder. Do not touch the soldering iron itself because otherwise the soldering iron will actually wick all of the, the solder and you won't get any on the, on the leg and, and it'll just do, do like this and it'll stay on the soldering iron and now that you've gotten the solder on the, the legs, that's it. That's, that's all that needs to be done there. Now the only thing that we need to do is we need to connect the resistor and then we need to connect the power supply. Um, you don't need to connect the resistor directly to the LEDs. You can connect um, wires from here to your power supply and you can have the uh, resistor uh, directly attached to the power supply. Here we have our power supply. Away from them. And here we have our resistor. And then we're going to just solder the resistor into the power supply. And sometimes it's even possible to solder it like this. You solder onto the the resistor a small amount of solder like this. This will make it easier to connect it to the the power supply and then we're going to we're going to get some of the insulation off the wire itself we have a little bit longer wire and then I'm going to tie this into the wire this is the easiest way to tie the wire, however, this is not the prettiest way to do it. And then we'll just need to solder this. And there we go. That's done. Then we will just add batteries. There we go, now we have batteries. And once we have batteries, and see, since we've completely forgotten which way around our LEDs are, test the LEDs that you know which side is going to work and which side is not going to work. Testing is one of the most important things when you build these things because as we can currently see, it's not working. Why is it not working? We have tested both sides and all the connections seem to be okay, but we forgot to turn this thing on. Well, it seems that it was on. Still nothing. Debugging, the funnest part of electronics. Now that I've got it working, and the power button is actually working this time, here we can see that it works like it's supposed to. Now we'll wire this side. We'll just wind the resistor around the leg. And then we need to solder it into place. Now, if you want to use something like heat shrink, you need to put the heat shrink on before you solder this part, because after this, you're not going to be able to put it on. This is actually really important because you will forget, and then you will have to desolder the, the joint because you forgot to put it. And it's actually really common for people to forget that. Uh, 
And there we go, that's joined. There we go. And again, I'm going to take some off from the coating. Get that better. And a little bit longer. Piece the wire on. And again, you want to put the the uh, heat shrink on before you put these things on and turn off the the power before you solder the last joint Uh, there's also, you can use something like this to hold the, you can use anything to hold them down, which makes joining things together a lot easier when they're not jumping around. And you don't need a lot of solder, a little bit is enough. And that's it. Now we're going to do a final test, checking that wires are not touching each other in the wrong way. And we're going to turn this thing on. There seem to be some problems with my battery case, but in any case, and turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. That's how easy it is. This battery case has some serious issues. Yeah, if you don't have a a a uh, switch in the the battery case itself, you'll just join a switch in between the LEDs uh, so that it turns it on when it's on and turns it off when it's off.